Hello everyone. Today we have a video of extractions from snouted cobras, which are nausea annulifera. These are fairly large cobras that are native to southeastern Africa. Uh, sometimes you may hear people call them banded Egyptian cobras because they used to be considered um, the same as the Egyptian cobra, Naja Haja, but they are their own species now and not found anywhere near Egypt, so that's why they are snouted cobras. These are really variable snakes that can be almost just like a solid slaty gray color, or they can have a decent amount of banding on them that can be whitish or yellowish in color. And you'll see some of the other ones have that same sort of, or have more banding, I guess I should say. And snouted cobras are interesting because they're kind of like generalists as far as food goes. So these guys will eat birds, they'll eat reptiles, they'll eat mammals, they'll eat amphibians. Uh, they actually really like to eat puff adders, which I think is pretty interesting considering that's another big venomous snake. And they do cause problems for people occasionally because they like to get into uh, chicken coop sometimes. And just because they're a larger snake, uh, you know, they can cause some problems. They do have a neurotoxic venom, but they also can cause some site necrosis. So the bite is considered pretty serious. This one here has a little bit more banding, you can see. You may have noticed this already, but I have made some effort to cut this together so you can see each snake coming out. And then we switch views to the front, which is through our window, so the lighting is not as good. Uh, sorry, we're just not high tech enough, I guess. <laughs> and uh, then back to the inside so that you can see um, the snake biting the funnel. So this is this view here where you have the shadows is the outside. Um, and that's where people can watch from when they're here visiting us. And we do use the parafilm on elapids, so that's cobras, mambas, anything in the elapid family. And the parafilm is just a wax membrane. And the only reason it's there is it gives the snake a little bit of something to bite onto. Many people ask us why we use the parafilm for some snakes and not others. It's really not necessary for vipers and pit vipers that have large fangs. They can just kind of hook over the side of the funnel. Uh, but snakes with shorter fangs, it gives them a little bit of an idea that they're biting something. It's not really necessary to keep the venom clean because our snake's mouths are clean to begin with. And this one here, you could see, didn't cooperate. <laughs> it jumped back out again. No big deal. Sometimes they just get turned around the wrong way. Doesn't really matter too much. Just reset and start over again. Also, most of these, actually I think all of the snakes in this video, with the exception of the very last one you'll see, uh, were born here at the zoo. They are uh, two and a half, three years old now. Um, this is early 2023 when I'm recording this, so uh, I think that's about right for their age. And these are all siblings, so all of the different color variations that you've seen, um, this one's really trying to bite, are uh, just typical and can come from the same clutch of snakes. So this one's quite pretty, I think. Now the next snake you'll see uh, after this one gets put back is actually the mother of all of these guys. And uh, she does a pretty interesting thing when Jim is going to get the hold on her. So I want to talk a little bit about that. I'm giving you kind of a heads up that that's coming. And basically that's just because I think it's kind of interesting and it was captured fairly well um, on the video. So I think it's just kind of a neat thing to see. So as soon as this one goes back in its little home there, all right, so this is the mom, and you can see she's a little bigger than the, the youngsters. And if you watch, as uh, he goes to, to pin her down there with the hook, you might see this little motion. So here's it is slowed down. Now the hook has a vet wrap or 
you know, like an adhesive bandage basically wrapped around the shaft of the hook. So it gives a little bit of padding and a non-slip surface to it. And that's what he's using uh, to hold their head down so that they don't bite him. And this snake, as he goes to push down, if you watch just in front of and underneath the hook, the snake is arcing her neck upwards. And so that is basically preventing the pin from being really secure. And this is a spot where I think someone inexperienced or who wasn't really paying attention could uh, get a bite. And so when Jim goes to make this grab, you see the snake is shot forward slightly. See how he sets his finger there right behind the head or on the back of the head actually. And this is a different view. So again, the view from the outside from the front and you can see this little space form under her chin right there. And then you can see Jim adjust uh, to make the grab. So here it is again, slowed down. And uh, I think it's pretty obvious to see. You can also notice the snake kind of push her nose down into the mat a little bit, like right here. See how she's kind of pushing down, creating that little space. And right there, she's able to squeeze forward. So that's a point where things could go very wrong uh, if you're not paying attention or not experienced in what you need to do. So let me let her get her bite here. And this was the last one that we did this day. So just collected some venom, not a huge amount from these guys. I think there were a total of six snakes uh, done this day. And, you know, as always, we really appreciate you guys watching the videos. We hope you learned something today. Uh, at, you know, normal YouTube things, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy watching our videos. Uh, and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.